Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's uh, do an update on the three cold fronts that we have uh, moving into the west this week. Finally, we've got an active pattern that's going to kick into gear. So three fronts between today and probably the 29th. The one today is very minor, only affecting a few locations. Um, and then the second and third are, are, have, will have more impact to them, colder air. Right now, the rain snow lines are very high but they'll gradually drop behind each front. And Colorado is going to be a waiting game. I don't think we're going to see much of anything here until probably 1027, 1028, 1029. It's going to be very warm here in Colorado until we start to get the more significant uh, cold fronts in here. Um, so that's the way things are shaping up right now. Let me show you what it actually looks like. This is Lake Louise up there in the Banff area. And you can see some light snow accumulation as expected there. This first front is small, only affecting like the Banff area, Montana, and probably Wyoming with some very light, fast accumulation, and only the highest levels. Because again, we're talking about a very high rain snow line initially, and then it will fall gradually over time. In fact, I did look at that this morning on my... Um, on my blog. Here's forecast rain snow line. I did a, a breakdown for the Wasatch Min and Max um, for the rain snow line. For example, today it started 11.2. It maxed out at about 12,000. Now it really dropped significantly starting on the 26th through the 28th, all the way down to 5,900 feet. 5,900 feet by the 20, morning of the 28th. I also looked at the central mountains of Colorado. Look how warm it is through the 27th. 13,000 to 14,000 um, rain snow line freezing levels. So very warm and dry in Colorado until we get late into the 27th and then it drops into the 28th and 29th. Teton Range, uh, same kind of thing, very high snow level initially, but it will drop over time, especially 25, 26, 27, and 28. So give that a look. Um, let me show you what this looks like over time. Forecast radar and satellite. So there's our current view. Now, by tomorrow morning, some leftover snow around Banff and BC, new low moving into the Pacific Northwest. That's storm number two. And there it is by Tuesday at four. You can see it. And by the time we get into Wednesday morning, it's starting to push a cold front with snow across Idaho and falling snow levels through most of the Pacific Northwest as well. But snow in Montana. And then by the time we get into the afternoon hours on Wednesday, snow starting to hit the Tetons continuing in big sky, and then it makes its way into the Wasatch. Again, initially high snow levels, but they'll all start to fall. This is Thursday at 6 a.m., and then it rolls, and it brushes Colorado late on the 26th, like in the northern mountains, uh, but then it quickly moves away, so there's not much there. And then here comes storm number three. Here's Friday in the morning, Saturday in the morning. And there it is, the storm by Saturday and late at night, about 9.45. So the low's starting to organize. It's coming, it's pulling the cold front down through Wyoming. Uh, another shot of snow for Utah. And it's all moving into Colorado, 28, 29. So there are your three, uh, three scenarios, three different uh, storm systems, three different cold fronts as it looks right now. As far as um, the jet stream goes... This is the jet on the 25th. You can see that storm number two developing up in the Pacific Northwest, starting to see a, a dip in that. And that'll send a cold front down through uh, uh, Utah and Wyoming, Montana, Idaho. And then, it, like I showed you, kind of brushes the northern mountains of Colorado. This is the jet um, by the 27th. This is storm number three up in the Pacific Northwest. This one's going to dig further to the south. This one is what will ultimately open up the door for the coldest air to drop south, to plunge south. Here it is, um, the jet by the 29th. Look how far south it is. Opens it wide up to get that cold air all the way down from Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and then it moves into Colorado with rapidly falling temps on the 29th. How much snow are we talking about? Well, we do it in two phases. So today through the 27th, so you're looking at the combination of two different cold fronts here. Some decent snow. Once the snow levels fall, we're going to get accumulation 6 to 12 across uh, the Teton Range, maybe more higher up. A good amount of snow in Montana and about 6 inches there through uh, Alta Snowbird. Here is uh, phase 2. Um, this is the final storm. It's colder. There's going to be um, better snow accumulation lower, uh, lower elevations. But you can see another 6 for the Wasatch, probably um, 3 to 8, maybe 4 to 10. 
if we can do it in Colorado and some leftover snow in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. So we'll go back. There's phase one, and there's phase two. Thanks, guys, for tuning in here. Always appreciate it, and take care.